Hello and welcome to this video where I will be summarising an area of the TX syllabus that can be quite challenging at times for students. My name is Aileen Edgar and I'm an expert tax tutor. The aim of this short video is to take you through some of the more complicated aspects from the VAT part of the syllabus, focusing primarily on calculations as opposed to the administration of VAT. VAT doesn't have one big computation, unlike, say, income tax or corporation tax. Instead, there are a wide range of different rules to remember that impact on the calculations. And there are lots of phrases and words that are particularly used in VAT that we don't necessarily see anywhere else. So in this session, I'll run through some of the computational rules and clarify some of the trickier terminology that's used. And then I'll point you towards some of our other great resources where you can find additional support for these topics. First of all, let's quickly recap the core principles of VAT, namely the concept of input and output taxes, which is also one of the first pieces of terminology that we need to clarify. Let's imagine we're running a furniture business, selling handcrafted wooden tables and chairs to individuals for them to have in their homes. We need to purchase in wood in order for us to make the tables and chairs. When we buy in the wood from our suppliers, we may have to pay some VAT called input tax. And when we sell items to our customers, we may have to charge VAT on the sale price, and this is known as output tax. And what happens is the businesses are just really collecting the VAT on behalf of HMRC. So when our customer buys our tables or chairs, that has VAT added to it, and as an end consumer, they're the ones who ultimately suffer that VAT. But the VAT registered businesses involved in the full supply chain there are the ones who ultimately pay it over to HMRC by collecting in the tax as part of the sales prices to their customers and netting it off against their own input tax that they've suffered in the same period. The difference is handed over to HMRC or perhaps claimed back from HMRC if actually these businesses have suffered more input tax than the amounts of output tax they've collected in from sales to their own customers. So input tax or input VAT, which means the same thing, is the VAT charged on items we input into our business to help us create whatever we're creating or provide our services and output VAT or output tax is the VAT charged on items that we then sell to our customers, so the outputs of our business. So we as a business will suffer input VAT because we're going to have to pay that amount to our suppliers and we as a business will charge output VAT to our own customers, but only if our business is VAT registered. Input VAT can be claimed back from HMRC as long as we're making taxable supplies, so not exempt supplies. By supplies, the word supply is a very specific VAT word. It could be goods or a service. It could be the sale or rental to someone. If a business is not registered for VAT, then there is no VAT to be added onto anything. If we are registered for VAT, we're then collecting that VAT on behalf of HMRC. So all these businesses then, if you imagine a chain of businesses like in this image, all of these businesses are just collecting VAT and handing that over to HMRC. And what they do is work out a balance of the input tax they've suffered. So this is the VAT registered businesses input tax that they've suffered and they net that off against any output tax that they've collected in from their customers in normally a quarterly period. If there's more output tax, that they've collected than input tax that they've suffered, they hand that difference over to HMRC. If actually they've suffered more input tax on things they've bought into the business than what they've collected from their own customers, then HMRC owes them money. So we can recover our input tax that we suffered. Now let's look at specific rules around certain items where we're not allowed to recover input tax on purchases even if we have a VAT registered business and are making taxable supplies to our own customers. Let's look at cars first of all. Input VAT recovery on cars is irrecoverable unless they are used for business purposes. If we're looking at taxis, hire cars, 
new cars for resale and driving instructors cars, 100% of the input tax on the purchase of those is actually recoverable because they're being used for business purposes. Leased cars can only have 50% of VAT recovery on them as an exception to the general rule that the purchase of cars is irrecoverable for VAT purposes. Now the business entertainment rule is an interesting one because students will often get muddled here. The reason for that is because there's a similar but crucially different rule under income tax or corporation tax around whether business entertainment is deductible as a trading expense or not. So for VAT purposes, it's important to notice that business entertainment for customers is irrecoverable unless those customers are based overseas. That is different to our rule for income tax and corporation tax purposes in terms of working out if an item of expenditure is deductible for trading profits or not. And the last one there is goods purchased for private use. That would be irrecoverable, any input tax suffered on those, unless the goods were initially purchased for use in a business, so long as the output VAT is then accounted for based on the value of the replacement item. If that isn't done, then the input tax suffered on those items is not recoverable. Now we're going to look at an example of where input tax recovery may be blocked. Emmett is registered for VAT and his business incurred the following input VAT on purchases and expenses for the quarter. Purchase of new office furniture, tax of £1,200. Purchase of new car for business and private use by one of Emmett's employees, tax of 5,000. Entertainment of UK customers, tax of 790 pounds. Entertainment of overseas customers, 840 pounds tax. And we're being asked, what is the total amount of recoverable input VAT for the quarter? So I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at this question yourself first before looking at the answer. It's important to note that the figures you were given in the question are actually input VAT amounts. We don't have to work out the tax ourselves. In this question, we're being asked what the total amount of recoverable input VAT is. The purchase of the new office furniture, the input tax on that will be recoverable, but the purchase of the new car for business and private use by an employee, the input tax on that is not recoverable, and that's because it is the purchase of a car and it is not being used 100% for business purposes. The entertainment of the UK customers, the input tax on that is not going to be recoverable, but the entertainment of the overseas customers, the input tax on that is recoverable. Therefore, the total amount of recoverable input VAT for the quarter is going to be the £1,200 for the furniture and the £845 for the overseas customer entertainment. So that's a total of £2,045. Now, one of the places where the wording of information in the question can trip students up is whether the amounts given are inclusive or exclusive of VAT. This is one of the most fundamental parts of VAT. And if you're rushing your answers and don't take the time to read the information in the scenario carefully, then you can make mistakes here very easily. You can be given a cost or sales price in a question which is either exclusive or inclusive of any applicable VAT. If you're being asked to work out the amount of input tax, for example, that can be reclaimed from HMRC on a good a business has bought in in order to help it make taxable supplies itself, then you need to know if the purchase price of that good includes VAT or not. If you're told the figure is exclusive of VAT, then in order to work out the amount of VAT that would be paid on that purchase, you have to take the value and multiply it by the tax rate. So 20% if it's a standard rated item. So if we're told that they spent £5,000 on a purchase and that was exclusive of 20% VAT, then the VAT would be £1,000 and the full amount that we would pay for the good would be £6,000. 
Remember that VAT is applied to the net price. If you're told that the figure is inclusive of VAT, then in order to work out the amount of VAT that would be paid on that purchase, you have to take the value and multiply it by one divided by six. Now, why is it one divided by six? One divided by six is the same as 20 divided by 120. 20 is a standard rate of VAT and 120 is 100% plus the standard rate of VAT. The reason why we multiply by one over six or indeed 20 over 120, which is the same thing, is pure arithmetic. If we're told that the £5,000 supply is inclusive of 20% VAT, then we need to extract the VAT part of that total price. We multiply £5,000 by one over six to get £833. That means 5,000 less 833, so 4,167 pounds is the net price and 833 pounds is the VAT on that figure. If you want to satisfy yourself that this works out, you can take the 4,167 net price and multiply it by 20% and you'll get 833 pounds. Petra registered her new business for VAT on the 1st of November. In each of the eight months prior to that VAT registration, she paid £200 a month inclusive of VAT for creation of her website and £150 per month exclusive of VAT for marketing the business. Both of these supplies were standard rated for VAT. What is the total amount of pre-registration input VAT that Petra can recover? So this is where we've had some input tax payments prior to the business being VAT registered. The rules about pre-registration VAT recovery are that it's available for services that have been paid for in the six months leading up to VAT registration and for goods it would be the four years leading up to that registration. So in this question both of the expenses are to do with services so we're only going to allow VAT recovery of the six months worth of each expense leading up to the date of registration. The other complication you need to look out for is the fact that one of these amounts was given as inclusive of VAT and the other was exclusive of VAT. We need to work out the appropriate amount of input VAT for each expense and will therefore have to approach it slightly differently for each one. Where we have been given a VAT inclusive figure like we have for the website development cost we take the £200 per month and multiply it by 1 divided by 6 in order to extract the VAT element out of that price. So £200 multiplied by 1 over 6 gives us roughly £33. For the marketing costs, that has been given to us exclusive of VAT. And so to work out the input tax that Petra would have paid per month on that, we need to multiply the £150 by 20%. So that is £30. Remember, though, that we were given monthly costs and we are only going to be allowed to claim back the tax on six months worth. So we take the tax amounts of £30 and roughly £33, multiply them by six and we come to £380 in total. So you must make sure you read questions and information provided to you very, very carefully. Watch out for whether amounts are VAT inclusive or exclusive whether they are monthly, quarterly or annual figures and what type of expense they are. There is a technical article available on the ACCA website which covers VAT and cars, including fuel. But in this session, I wanted to focus on one particular part of the syllabus around fuel and the scale charges, as this can sometimes cause a little bit of confusion. Where input tax has been suffered by a business on the purchase of fuel and that fuel has been used for business purposes, then that input tax is fully recoverable. Of course, depending on whether that business is making taxable supplies or not. However, where some of that fuel is actually being used by an employee or the owner of a business for private mileage, then it's more complicated. We need to check whether the employee or owner of the business has paid to cover the cost of the private fuel. 
If they have, then the business will need to work out an amount of output VAT on that value. Input tax suffered on the private fuel is therefore recoverable because HMRC is collecting in some output tax on that amount. If, however, the employee or owner does not pay for the private fuel, then the business can only recover input tax suffered on purchasing that fuel if an amount of output tax is worked out based on a fuel scale charge, which is based on the CO2 emissions level of the vehicle. In your exam, you'll be told what the fuel scale charge is. Let's look at an example of working out the amount of input and output VAT on private use of fuel. We've got Big Corp Limited providing one of its directors with a company car for the whole of the tax year, and that car was used for both business and private mileage. The total cost for the company for all the mileage in the quarter to March was £1,000 inclusive of VAT. 50% of this was for private use by the director. And we're told the relevant quarterly scale rate is £364 and that's inclusive of VAT. What is the amount of output VAT and input VAT that the company should include in its VAT return for the quarter in respect of the fuel for this car? So pause the video and have a go at this. Key things to look out for in this question were that we were asked to consider the fuel as a total, not the private or business use part of it. The figures we were given were inclusive of VAT. So to get the VAT element out of those figures, we would need to multiply by one over six. The answer then for the input VAT is to take the thousand pounds and multiply it by one over six and we get 167 pounds. The output VAT is based on the quarterly scale charge that we were told in the question, 364 pounds, that is inclusive of VAT. So we want to get an amount of output VAT out of that figure. So multiply 364 by one over six, we get 61 pounds. The fact that 50% of the mileage was for private use by the director, you see, doesn't impact our calculations here. What it does mean is that because there is some private use element, HMRC will only allow input tax recovery on the fuel if we are collecting in some output VAT and handing it over. So here, as long as we, as the business, hand over £61 of output VAT, we can claim back £167 of input VAT. One of the calculation complications that could come up with a VAT invoice is how to deal with a potential discount that we're offering to our customers. This discount might be because of the size of the customer's order, as part of a loyalty scheme for regular customers, or to encourage our customers to pay their invoices promptly. The key thing to remember here is that the VAT is generally calculated in the same way. We'll calculate the VAT based on the amount that the customer actually pays. Now, this is more straightforward when we are offering, say, a 5% discount for orders over a certain volume or for customers on our loyalty scheme, as we can work out the actual amount they'll pay before we issue the invoice. The difficulty with discounting comes around where we have discounts for prompt payment. And that's because at the time of raising the invoice, we don't know if the customer will take up the offer or not. So in most cases, what happens is we work out the VAT based on the full price before the discount. And then if the customer does actually pay the lower price, we can refund them any difference in the VAT part of the invoice via a credit note. Let's look at an example with a prompt payment discount. On the 1st of March, a sales invoice was raised for £4,000 exclusive of VAT in respect of a standard rated supply. To encourage prompt payment, a discount of 8% was offered for payment within seven days. 
and the customer did indeed pay within that seven day period. What amount should the company record in its VAT return for the output VAT on this £4,000? So we're asked to work out the output VAT, not the value of the actual invoice. And the figures we've been given in the question were exclusive of VAT, so we need to multiply it by 20% to get the VAT element. And we need to remember the key rule that VAT needs to be based on the amount actually paid by the customer. Now, the amount put on the invoice will be based on the full price. And subsequently, then, when the customer pays, we would issue them with a credit note for the difference of the VAT and their discount. But in terms of recording it in our VAT records for our VAT return, we're going to put the £4,000 net figure multiplied by the discount. We're giving 8% discount, so we multiply by 92%. So that's 100% less the discount figure. And then multiply it by 20%, which is the tax rate. And therefore, the output VAT that will actually be collected in from the customer is £736. So that is the final amount. The amount after the customer has paid, after the discount has been given, and the correct amount of VAT then handed over to HMRC. We've come across a lot of terminology in this session on VAT, so let's recap some of those keywords that you need to be really clear on. Input goods or services bought in to help run or create goods and services in a business. Output, goods or services provided to customers of a business. Recoverable, you'll hear this word used when we have a VAT registered business that's trying to calculate how much, if any, input tax that it has suffered on purchases it's made can be claimed back from HMRC. Watch out that unlike in other parts of the tax rules, where there's a focus on distinguishing between capital and revenue expenditure, here we are looking at whether VAT can be recovered on our purchases and there's no such distinction. So whether we've bought a lorry or stock for our business, we don't treat it differently under VAT rules. The opposite of recoverable is irrecoverable which means that any input VAT paid by the business on purchases it's made cannot be claimed back from HMRC. This could be because that business is not VAT registered or because the business is not making taxable supplies. Plus, as we saw earlier in this session, there can be specific rules in the tax legislation that prevents input tax being claimed back on certain purchases or expenses like cars not used for business purposes and expenditure on entertaining UK customers. One of the reasons just mentioned there for not being able to reclaim VAT was that the business is not using that purchase in order to help it make taxable supplies to its own customers. It's crucial that you're very clear on what taxable supplies means when you're looking at VAT computations or trying to apply some of the special VAT rules. Taxable supplies are those on which VAT is charged. Remember that zero rated supplies still have VAT charged on them just at 0%. Supplies are often sales a business makes to its customers, but it could also be, for example, renting property to someone too. VAT inclusive is where the price includes VAT. To find the VAT amount, you need to multiply by one divided by six. VAT exclusive, the price does not include VAT. To find the VAT, you multiply by 20% if it's a standard rated supply. Now, if you need to revise these VAT computations and rules further, then you can find some fantastic free resources on the ACCA Study Hub. If you're looking specifically for further detail on the topics we've discussed in this session, then I recommend you have a look at Chapter 22 of the TX Study Hub. 
This chapter covers the scope of VAT, admin rules around registration, penalties and overseas issues, along with further detail on the topics we've looked at in this session around input tax recovery and specific computational points. Question practice is so incredibly important in preparing for your TX exam, so make sure you have a look in the quizzes section of the Study Hub for a quiz covering a number of different aspects of the VAT syllabus. Some revision questions as well. At the time of recording, these are the questions available for section A and B for VAT on the Study Hub. There are also some Section C questions which contain elements of VAT that you'll find on there too. Thank you for watching and I hope this session on some of the computational and terminology elements of VAT in the syllabus has been helpful in supporting your revision of this area and preparation for your exam.